This is $600 in ones. I'm going to look through every single one of them to find fancy serial numbers, errors, novelty notes, and whatever cool things we can find. Let's get into it. Right, the first find. For me, I like to keep all the notes 1999 and back. 6.6 .6 years is the average lifespan of a $1 bill. It gets harder and harder to find these kinds of notes, especially in good condition as time goes on. There's a lot of collectors that want to have one example of every $1 bill from every series, every district, in every run. So to have a note like this one right here, which this is the series 1999 $1 bill, KB block. Sometimes there's people that will actually pay more than face value for these notes because they are missing a certain block in their collection. So I have sold a lot of notes 1999 and back. 2001 is actually becoming one of those rarer, not rarer, but more scarce series, if you will, because of that 6.6 .6 year average lifespan. As time goes on, it does become harder to find certain blocks. And there's even modern blocks that are not very easy to find. For example, a DH 2013 $1 bill. If you had a D and an H, you know, it's from 2013, that would be a keeper. Here's things that I like to keep. There's a lot of people that like to collect these. These are called gas pump serial numbers. You can see how one of the digits is higher than all of the rest. Now, there are different ranges of extremity with this error. You can see the digits going way up into the CNA of America. You can even see them going down the higher or lower they go the more money that they will be worth in this condition they're about three to five dollars a piece i sold a lot of gas pumps at that price so i will be taking this one out and pulling it and putting it aside all right this is something to talk about this is an ia block 2017 a one dollar bill the ia block for 2017 a did not have very many examples printed they only printed this block to 44.8 million there was only one run so you will not be finding an ib 2017a they only made them to ia according to the latest records of the bep so this is something these kinds of notes the i district a run 2017a one dollar bills are something that i would encourage you to potentially hold on to as more people come into this hobby because there was only one print run and we have that 6.6 .6 year average lifespan in the future it will be a lot harder to find these 2017a ia notes Keep that in mind. There are many reasons that I like fancy serial numbers. Number one, it offers a low barrier to entry for anybody new to enter the hobby. There are some serial numbers that are rare and there are some serial numbers that are common. I like to think of fancy serial number collecting kind of like Pokemon card collecting. You have some Pokemons that are extremely rare and then some that are pretty common. And it's the same way with fancy serial numbers. You have some that are extremely rare like solids and eight digit ladders and true binaries and seven of a kind and things like this. And then you have some that are a little bit more common, like this one right over here. This is a triple and a pair consecutive. Some people would even call this a full house note. Here are the rules of this serial number. So you need to have a three in a row and then a pair of two numbers all together. If this seven would have been in between the nines here, or if this seven would have been in between the fours and the nines, this would not be a full house or consecutive triple and pair serial number. These have a one in 514 chance of being found per run. That means that there are about 186,624 examples of these notes. 
Now here are a couple of different ways to collect fancy serial numbers. You can have one example of every fancy. So you would have from a trinary all the way up to an eight digit ladder. That's an easy way and a fun way to get into it. A more advanced way is to have one example of every fancy from every series. An even more advanced way is to have one example of every fancy serial number from every series, every district, and every run. Now that is a very tough and respectable collection to acquire. There is, again, over 100 different types of fancy serial numbers. Some of them won't be very hard to find. Some of them will be very hard to find. But there's even a lot of ways to collect the smaller stuff. For example, let's say you're collecting these full houses. Maybe you would want to have a full house of fours and nines where it's a leading orientation or position one, or a full house in position two, like this serial number is. What I'm referring to is which digit the serial number pattern starts in. So this is the second digit that the serial number pattern is starting in. So this is in position two right over here. Maybe you would wanna have an example of a full house with only fours and nines in position one, position two, three, four, and I believe four would be the last position you could have it in because this pattern takes up five digits. That would be really cool if you could accomplish something like that. And not only that, you could have a full house that has fives and eights, fives and sixes. You can collect however you want. I'm just trying to give you some ideas, but that is how some people do it. So I will be keeping this one. This is a serial number that, again, is about a 1 in 514 chance of being found. There's 186,624 examples per 96 million notes. Some runs are shorter than others, which makes it harder to find certain serial numbers in those runs. And that's another thing to consider as well. got another gas pump. This is a gas pump too. It's extreme enough for me to keep it. There's a few different names for gas pumps. They're called turn digits. They're called stuck digits. They're called odometers. A lot of different names. It's all talking about the same thing. One of the serial number dials got stuck and therefore one of the digits went higher than all of the rest. We have an interesting talking point. This note right here is a low serial number. So I am a numbers kind of guy. I like to understand what the rarity and chance is of finding a certain serial number. To have three leading zeros in a row like this is a one in 1,066 chance. There are 90,000 low serial numbers with three leading zeros. And this is really where I consider the low serial numbers to begin. It's greater than a 1 in 1,000 chance. To have two leading zeros is a 1 in 100 chance of being found. So I consider the three leading zeros the start of the low serial number family. If you have four zeros in the front, that is a greater than 1 in 10,000 chance, which actually makes those low serial numbers with four leading zeros more rare than binaries, radars, and repeaters. To have five leading zeros is a 1 in 160 6,000 chance. There's only about 900 low serial numbers that have five leading zeros in the front. If you have six leading zeros, it's a one in a million chance. And if you have seven leading zeros, it's about a one in 10 million chance. So those rarities go up by a power of 10 pretty much every single time. So this is where I start the low serial number family. Not only this, you have the potential of a three digit leading zero to be a novelty note. Which novelty note is it? Zip code notes. There are some people that like to collect zip codes. I think it would be kind of cool to have one zip code of every single major city. How I would check to see if it's a zip code, I would go to usps.com, go to their zip code lookup, enter in 49153, and that's gonna tell us if it's a legit zip code. But either way, the fancy aspect of this being a low serial number, it's about five to $10. All right, we have our first star node. This one's in rough condition. I keep all star nodes, okay? All star nodes have more value than face, especially, I'm not sure if you guys heard this, but they're actually getting ready to discontinue star notes, which is gonna be kind of sad, but they are switching over to NS LEPI presses. LEPI stands for Large Examining Printing Equipment. Currently, or more for a while, 
The BEPs used LEPI presses. They're getting ready to switch over to something called an NS LEPI, which stands for non-sequential large examining printing equipment. Now, this is something that is going to change the way that they print notes. They will no longer print very large runs of sequential notes, and here's why. If an error is found on a bill, the NS LEPI is just going to shred it, and they're just going to skip the number. So they will no longer be producing star notes. That's kind of an interesting aspect. Star notes, they have a time limit. Now, there will still be star notes that are in circulation and star notes will continue to be legal tender and it'll take them a while to stop producing all star notes across all denominations because it's a process they have to phase in the new printing equipment they're going by denomination i believe that they are actually starting with the one dollar denomination i keep all star notes this is a pack star note right over here pack star notes get about two to five dollars currently in this market over face values it's like a three to four dollar note even though it's really ragged got another 1999 i'm gonna hold on to that one if this seven would have been a six this would have been a true flipper those are about a one in fourteen thousand chance which means that there are six thousand five hundred sixty one examples of a true flipper per run more rare than a binary radar and a repeater those get about twenty to a hundred dollars over face all right that's strap one so far we have a 23rd uh, sorry a 2009 d star note we got a dd block low serial number gas pump two full house a scarce district ia and the gas pump five and there's another 1999 that i must have accidentally pulled back let me find that one real fast because i like to keep the uh, 1999s and back and even 2001s and back here it was all right on to strap number Two. So for those of you guys that do not know, I am streaming every Monday and Friday at 8 p.m. Central Time on Whatnot. I have a link in the description. If you guys sign up with that link, Whatnot's actually going to give you a $15 credit that you can use either on my stream or somebody else's. But the really cool thing about it is that you will be able to come and hang out with me live and actually ask me questions in the chat. I do live bill searching on Whatnot sometimes, and that's another fun aspect as well. I would encourage you guys to sign up. It's completely free and you can come hang out. Okay, it's a four digit ladder. 4321. Now, this is one of the more common serial numbers, and in fact, this is actually the most common ladder in the ladder family. Four digit ladder is a 1 in 303 chance. There are 316,800 examples per run. Currently, these get about $3 to $8 over face. A lot of different ways to collect them. I have found the most fun way is to find, like, so here's 4321. If you could have 4321 in the first position, 4321 in the second position, 4321 in the third position, 4321 in the fourth position, and then 4321 in the fifth position. And then if you could do that for every ladder, so if you had like, you know, 3210, 4321, 5432, 6543, and so on and so forth, that'd be a pretty cool set. About 50 notes, that'd be a complete four digit ladder set. You can do descending, you can do ascending. Uh, ladders typically will have an ascending and descending variation. So I will be holding on to this one. All right, look at that. We got us another star note. This is a St. Louis District 2013 star note. I will be holding on to this one. This is a pack star note, 3.2 million run. Nice find though. Got another IA 2017A. So with these, because 2017A was so recent, right now there's going to be a bit of a surplus, which is a good opportunity to potentially hold on to them. So I'm going to be holding on to this one because those IAs, they were not printed very much. So it will be harder to find those in the future. I love bill searching. It is probably the most fun part of the numismatic uh, paper money hobby for me. I think, it, I mean, it, it's treasure hunting. There's no other way to put it. You have all these potential gems in these stacks of $1 bills and it's your job to go find them. To me, that's really cool. I want to start live streaming every Wednesday. And my goal with live streaming every Wednesday is to get to really connect with all a lot of the people 
that don't come to the whatnot live streams and are not in the group that I teach. There are so many of you guys that have questions that are finding bills. I would like to do a live stream once a week where I can really connect with my people and just have a conversation about modern paper money collecting because that is really what I focus on. That's really what I like to do and I am blessed enough to be able to do this full time. All right, ooh, we got a five digit ladder. This is three, four, five, six, seven. Here's something that's really cool about ladders. They go up exponentially in rarity. A four digit ladder is a one in 303 chance. A five digit ladder is a one in 4,348 chance. And there's only 22,080 examples per run. A six digit ladder is a one in 71,428 chance with only 1,344 examples per run. So if this 10 was an eight, or if this eight was over here, and this was three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that would have been a six digit ladder, super rare. A seven digit ladder is a one in 1 1.26 million chance, only 76 examples of a seven digit ladder. And the eight digit ladder is a one in 19.2 million chance, with only five examples per 96 million notes. So really cool, this is absolutely a keeper for me. This is a nice find. So you guys are hearing me quote a lot of rarities and the rarities that I'm quoting are from the fancy serial number master list, which is a resource that I created. I went through and calculated a lot of these different serial numbers mathematically to see how many examples per run there were. I put together a list of over a hundred and that is the fancy serial number master list. This is a really cool uh, ladder here. So this is a wraparound ladder, 01122344. Now these have not actually been added to the master list yet, but my guess is that these are going to be somewhere in between a binary and a seven of a kind, somewhere in that range. And that is a pretty large range, but this is definitely a keeper for me. Hey, this is something really cool as well. Okay, there is something called, or at least this is what I call it, uh, split block notes. What a split block note is, is whenever they start printing a note in one BEP, which for this instance, the 2017A $1 bills, their production started in the DC BEP. Okay. And then what happened was they switched over and ended printing in the Fort Worth BEP. That's called a split block. That's what I call it. It's whenever the block was split up amongst two different printing facilities. So AA was printed in both Washington, D.C. and Fort Worth, Texas. Now, the way to know if your note is from Fort Worth is to look over here at the front plate number. You can see there's a little FW right there. Let me go on ahead and zoom into that. So as you can see, there's a little FW on here. This is the front plate. There's an FW on your front plate. That means that the note was printed in the Fort Worth printing facility. Here you can see that this one has no FW, which means automatically it's from Washington, D.C. Now, another way to tell if your note is from Fort Worth or Washington, D.C. is actually by the back plate number. If you have a small print back plate number like this one here, you have a D.C note. If you have a large print back plate like this one right here, then your note is from Fort Worth. That's another way to tell. So the AA block from series 2017A on the $1 bill was printed first in December of 2019 in the DC printing facility. It printed these notes to 12.8 million, which is 2 15th the size of a 96 million note run. Then they switched over two years later in December of 2021, and they started from 12.8 million and one and printed up to 96 million notes. So that was in the Fort Worth. So it's harder to find DC AA blocks than it is Fort Worth AA blocks for series 2017A. And there's a bunch of people that will wanna have one example of every block from every series like on a $1 bill. It is sometimes harder whenever you have a split block, especially one like this, to find the DC variants. So I'm gonna hold on to this. And obviously it's not always going to be the case where DC was the lower print. Sometimes they'll start in the Fort Worth printing facility and end in the DC printing facility. Now for the case of series 2017A, AA block, they started in DC and ended in Fort Worth. 
All right, we have a five of a kind. This is a five of a kind zeros. You guys might not know, or you probably do if you've been following me for a while, but zeros, sevens and eights are traditionally the most desired numbers that you can have on a fancy serial number. Five of a kinds are the beginning in the of a kind family. You have five of a kinds, six of a kind, seven of a kinds, and of course, eight of a kind is a solid. Now, five of a kinds are one in 232 chance with 412,800 100 examples per run. So these have right now a three to $25 over face value value. Now, the only way you're going to get into that high price range, like if you're gonna get over $10, there's a lot of different things that need to be present on your bill. First off, you have a five of a kind and you wanna get over $10, it will need to be either zero, sevens, or eights. Number two, it'll need to be in really nice condition. And number three, it'll need to be from a shorter block. That is how you can start to entertain getting up over that $10 price barrier. If this was like five of a kind fives. The only way you would be able to get up to 10 bucks is if it was like a crispy uncirculated example. I absolutely keep these. That's a cool find. All right, we have a trinary serial number. A trinary serial number is any note that contains only three unique digits. So we have fours, twos, and a nine. That is three digits. That makes this a trinary. Trinary is coined from the word ternary, which means consisting of three parts. We take that word, change the ter to tri. Trinary means consisting of three numbers. Any serial number that has only three digits is a trinary. Trinaries are the most colorful serial number that is on the master list, in my opinion. You have a one in 146 chance of finding a trinary. There are over 656,100 trinaries per run. But I need to tell you that number is higher for multiple reasons. First off, on the master list, we have things like six of a kinds. We have stuff like true trinaries. We have things like super trinaries. We have true flippers. All of those that I just mentioned are trinaries and all of the amount uh, or example amounts for those notes are increasing the total amount of trinaries in a run. Not only that, some five of a kinds are trinaries some five in a rows are trinaries some radars are trinaries some repeaters are trinaries some low serial numbers are trinaries there are all kinds of different serial numbers that are inflating that number a little bit but whenever i do quote a rarity i will say that just to find any serial number with a trinary is a one in 146 chance not all trinaries are created equal. I would call this a run-of-the-mill trinary. These kinds of notes have really a three to twenty-five dollar over face value value attached to them. Now, again, the only way that you're going to get up towards that twenty-five dollar price point is if it's only zero sevens and eights. It's an immaculate, crisp, uncirculated condition, and it's from a special block. To entertain even getting over ten. It's going to need to check those boxes. This kind of note in this condition, I wouldn't ask more than five. I probably list this for three to five dollars and actually this one i just looked over at my mat this one is actually a uh, special block now not all special blocks are created equal let's go on ahead and get the numbers pulled up on this one ac for 2017 was printed to 57.6 million so for this run there are actually less trinaries that exist so technically it is a little bit harder to find a trinary in the ac block so definitely a keeper for sure all right that's strap two let's go on to strap three check this out this is a six of a kind six of a kinds are rarer than binaries radars and repeaters to find a six of a kind is a one in 17,778 chance. Now check this out. Guys, this is a trinary note. This is what I'm talking about. Not all trinaries are created equal. There's only three unique digits in this, but there's only 5,406 of a kinds per run. Now I have sold six of a kinds for $70. I'm not saying that this note's gonna get that same kind of price tag, but six of a kinds are really rare, honestly. They are more rare than binaries, radars, and repeaters. Now here's something that's kind of cool. There's a bit of an opportunity right now with six of a kinds. There are a lot of people 
that do not see these as fancy and don't understand their worth. As people are bill searching, they'll find notes like this and they won't pull them. And so what happens is, is because these are not traditionally pooled, there's going to be for a little bit an easier time to find these and here's why. A binary note, which those are very desirable serial numbers. Let me show you what a binary would look like. This is not something that I pulled in this search. This is just a note that I have. This note only has two digits in the serial number. Okay, this is a binary note. These are about a one in 9,091 chance. These sell for 20 to 100 bucks over face. If they're raw, they can go potentially higher depending on the grade, but there's 10,560 of these per run. There are 5,400 of these per run. I'm just gonna round to 10,000 of these, all right? Let's say you have 10,000 of these and then I'm gonna round just to 5,000 just for example purposes, okay? If you have 5,000 of these, but nobody pulls them and you have 10,000 of these, but nine out of 10 people pull them, it's going to be easier for a short amount of time to find these over these. Now, once people kind of wake up to the fact that these are actually more rare than these, these will begin to get pulled and it will be very, tough to find six of a kinds so absolutely a keeper really cool pool right over here wow look how close this was to being a radar now this is still a trinary so i'm keeping it but check it out eight six eight one one six eight eight this eight and six would have switched spots that would have been a radar and a six of a kind in the same strap that's crazy so eight six eight one one six eight eight nice trinary over here i am keeping this one for sure All right, we have a cool find. So I call these hybrid notes. They're almost radars. They're like mirrored repeaters, if you will. They're kind of weird. I just call them hybrids. So we got 0836-3680. If this would have been 0836-6380, it would have been a radar. I do keep these. They do have a bit of value on the secondary market. Right now, I see them going everywhere in between three and fifteen dollars. I mean, I have seen them gone higher. I saw one of these sell for ninety dollars, but I kind of count that as an outlier because I've only seen one like that go. So I don't really count that as like a you know something to really go off of. But I see about three to fifteen dollars on these. Sometimes a little higher. It all depends. All right, we got another trinary of three sevens and fives. Check it out. This is an AA 2017A Fort Worth note. So we found the DC earlier. This is the other side of the split block. So let me go on ahead and pull out the uh, DC that we found and we can kind of look at how they're from the same block and same series, but they're from a different printing facility. So here's an AA 2017 from the DC printing facility. Here's an AA 2017A from the Fort Worth printing facility. The DC facility is the rarer of the two. That's why I pulled that one. Got another full house. All right, 2017A San Francisco Star Note. This one's also a pack note. Who will find right over here? And right behind it, we have a trinary of sixes, eights, and twos. Keeping that one. This is a three consecutive pairs. Again, on the lower end of the fancy serial number master list. We have a pair, a pair, and then a third pair, all consecutive. If this seven would have been in between any one of these pairs, then this would not be three consecutive pairs, no. Three consecutive pairs are about a one in 400 chance with 240,000 examples per run. Three to $10 over face value, depending on the numbers, the condition, and the block. All right, and we have a nice five of a kind twos trinary. This one's pretty cool. This is an EA run. Now, something to note, you guys, A runs are the first runs that are printed. There are people that put more value on A runs than other runs. It's just a bit of nuance in the hobby. It's kind of important to keep that in mind got a five of a kind fours 
All right, this is an alternator note. Some people call these skippers. I call them alternators. Not that like one's right or one's wrong. I just call them alternators. But basically, you can see how there are sevens going throughout the serial number. Every other number, so 07573717, that is an alternator. An alternator is a one in 823 chance with 116,000 roughly examples per run let's get about three to twenty dollars of her face i'm keeping that one all right we got a four in a row twos four in a rows are the most common serial number for the in a row family a four in a row is a one in 217 chance he's get about three to twenty bucks over face value depending on the number the condition and the block zero sevens and eights are definitely the more desirable numbers on these bills This is a 2017A star note. This is actually a 640K sheet star note. So that's a pretty cool find. It's not in bad condition either. Really nice piece. Sheet star notes are more rare than pack star notes. I'm absolutely holding on to this one right here. Wow, we got us a five of a kind twos. This one's a strong AU condition as well. Here's another AA 2017A. This one's also a Fort Worth, which is the more common. All right, that is strap number four. We have two left. Okay, AE 2013. According to my resources, this is a special lock. Go on ahead and get it pulled up and see just how special it is. AE was printed to only 44.8 million instead of the normal 96 million. So I will be holding on to this. I call these short runs because the E run was a little bit short. The reason I hold on to these is because in the future it will be harder to find an AE block. And so if you have block and group collectors, they can potentially go up in value. So I'm going to be holding on to these. All right, you guys, this is what I call a true quadrinary. In the true family, you have true binaries true trinaries, true quadrinaries, and then quinaries. So basically, if you take the number line, you'll see that zero and one are right next to each other. You have any serial number that has a zero and one, that's a true binary. That term comes from binary computer coding language. You have zero, ones, and twos. We call those a true trinary. Quadrinaries are four numbers. If you have just four random numbers, that's not really a thing that is collected. But zeros, ones, twos, and threes, that's a true quadrinary if you only have those. Those are a one in 1,465 chance. So numbers wise, they're not the easiest thing to find. These are keepable. And then the lowest is the quinary, which is a one in 245 chance as it would only contain zeros, ones, twos, threes, and fours. Obviously you'd want to have a set of all of them. It gets harder as you go up and you start taking numbers away, but I will be holding onto this one. So this is a five of a kind sevens from the FA block. This is an A run, five of a kind, especially sevens, eights, and zeros. These are definitely a cool one. I'm absolutely keeping this bill right here. We got us a four digit ladder with some kind of ink on it. This is probably just like a teller stamp or something. Zero, one, two, three, I'm keeping that one. I've right, got another three consecutive pairs. All right, we're on the sixth and final strap. Hey, we got another four digit ladder. Almost passed that one up. Eight, seven, six, five. We got a nine, eight, seven, six. This one's trailing. The 2001, I'm gonna go on ahead and hold on to this one uh, just cause it's 2001. Four in a row nines. That's pretty cool. We got a 2017A B star note. This is the second B star note from 2017A. This one's a normal pack note. We're keeping that one though. Gas pump five. That one's pretty up there. Nineteen ninety-five. That's a cool one. I'm gonna keep that one for sure. It's the BS block. 
Got another three leading zeros low serial number. Again, about a one in 1,000 chance on these. I'm keeping this one. All right, and the last couple of notes, and that's it. That's the $600 bill search. Let's go through and see what we capped. All right, so I'm gonna sort these out by fancies and star notes and errors, and I'll get back to you. 27 fancy serial numbers, with the rarest one by far being the six of a kind sevens. Six star notes, about one per strap, with the rarest one being the 640K cheap star note, series 2017A, the New York District. Got about four gas pumps and then seven special blocks slash old notes. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. Hit that thumbs up button. If you want to learn from me, if you want to come and attend the class that I have, click the link in the description below. Right now, we are still running a special. For the first 100 people to sign up, they will get 33% off any tier that they choose to join with. I hope to see you there. Happy bill searching, and I'll see you next time.